Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've taken a little bit of a peek inside an Autos RECU and we've talked about how the application sits on top of the runtime environment or RTE and then the basic software sits beneath it. We've also talked about how application software components interact with the virtual function bus and, and this is how we describe our software in the first step of our design process in the Autos R Classic methodology. Now, really, I guess the next question is, where do we go after the virtual function bus? And also, to get to a really C to you, what, what do we do to, to get there? And why are the virtual function bus and the RTE both colored red? Let's go find out. Hi, I'm Ian Cunningham for Vector GB. Welcome to this intermediate episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, intermediate episode number six, how to get from virtual function bus to runtime environment. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the role of the AutoZar RTE in relation to the virtual function bus and how the AutoZar methodology takes us from the conceptual virtual function bus to the RTE in real ECUs. This is part of our short sequence of episodes where we're taking a deeper look at the Autosar Classic Platform methodology covering software and communication design. In fact, this is the, the final episode. So we're going to pick up right from where we finished in episode I5, how is information sent over networks? I recommend you go and watch that and the other episodes in this series if you haven't done so already. So let's think about the Autosar RTE. The AutoZar RTE is wholly generated software based on the AutoZar system description. And we talked about getting to an AutoZar system description in our previous episode. During generation of the RTE, the information flows at an atomic are converted into RTE function calls or RTE calls. So where we have a, an R port, when we've got a sender-receiver interface, we'd get a, an RTE read for that port and the data element. And where we have a, a sender interface on, on the P port, we'd have an RTE write for the port and the data that's to be written. So we're really getting to software now. And from an atomics perspective, this is really important. From an atomics perspective, the RTE calls are identical regardless of whether the source or target is on the same ECU or not. This means that in real ECUs, the RTE ensures that information is able to flow between connected software components, whether or not they're on the same ECU. And so taken across all ECUs, the RTE implements the AutoZar virtual function bus. So the AutoZar virtual function bus doesn't exist, the RTE does. And let's just think about some other things about what happens inside an ECU. So let's think about how e atomics are actually run. So if I want my atomic to run every 20 milliseconds, then we need to think when we're describing software, a really important step is actually describing how it will be initialized and how it will be executed. So for each task, the in the we put the, the ECU's operating system or OS will execute a runnable according to a schedule. So I'll create a, a, a schedule and every 20 milliseconds in that schedule, I expect the runnable for my atomic to get run. And as explained in episode F8, all tasks have deadlines that define a window for their execution when we want to have hard real-time behavior as we want to have in the Autar Classic platform. And atomics have an internal behavior and the internal behavior is used to describe their runnables, their initialization and their triggering. Now, Let's then think about some other things that happen inside an ECU. So what happens within the RTE? So as well as sharing information with other atomics, atomics often need to request the basic software to perform specific jobs for them. So for example, to read or write data to a persistent memory location for, for storage or to read information from that storage. So we maybe have some information that comes up from a CAN bus into an atomic RTE read 
port data, uh, RTE write port data down into the RTE, the next atomic in that ECU, then there's an RTE read again, uh, then we do an RTE write. Uh, now this RTE right also actually triggers a communication out onto onto Ethernet, uh, but also the R, uh, another software component then picks up that information inside the same ECU and does something with it. But this one also needs to interact with the basic software for some reason, and. The needs that Atomics have of the basic software are expressed as service needs. And the service needs of an Atomic are also captured as part of its internal behavior. So once we've captured our internal behavior, and it goes beyond what we've just talked about, again, we're only giving a summary in this series. Once we've done all our design tasks for every ECU in the system, we can take an extract of the system description to describe an ECU, an ECU extract or, or system extract. There's two terminologies that are, they aren't supposed to be interchangeable, but they are often used interchangeably. So we'll, we'll just reference them both here. So we take a, an ABS extract for our ABS ECU and we take an engine extract for our engine ECU. And then we give those to the relevant ECU developers. And they load it into their basic software configuration tooling. And then they enrich that with more details about an ECU and its software. And the result of this process is ECU configuration data, or ECUC for short. And at this point, the RTE is able to be generated. And the ECUC contains the complete configuration of all the basic software modules and atomics for a real ECU. As a summary, the Autozar RTE is generated for each ECU based on the system description. Using the RTE for information sharing means that the, lo the location of other atomics is hidden. Each port on an atomic becomes an RTE call. The internal behavior of atomics is described before we generate the RTE and it includes aspects such as their runnables, their service needs that they have on the basic software. And then within a real ECU, the operating system will trigger the runnables according to a schedule and the basic software will fulfill the service needs of atomics. Thank you very much for joining us on our journey through the Autozar Classic Platform methodology. Please visit our website if you'd like to find articles and webinars on the Autozar Classic system and software design process in our digital engineering platform Prevision and DaVinci Developer Classic. Please also go there if you want to find information on basic software configuration within DaVinci Configurator Classic, our free e-learning resources on the Autozar Classic platform, and of course, technical training. We provide technical training where you can learn loads about what's our system and communication design and how to perform our ECU configuration and RTE generation steps for the Autosar Classic platform. Please let us know if you'd like to know how to approach software and system design in the Autosar Adaptive platform. Feel free to ask us questions or send us other ideas that you have for topics with our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Thanks again to my colleagues, Alex Ginnett and Mahmoud Ibrahim for their help with information that sits, that triggered this episode and their technical reviews. Please also, of course, leave us a comment wherever you found this video. Hit that bell to get notified the next video that comes out on the Vector YouTube channel as well. I'm Ian Cullen for Vector GB. Thank you very much for joining us. Goodbye.